So hi, I'm uh, John Barlow from Johns Hopkins and want to say uh, a little bit about the recent uh, hot information about Abacavir. Uh Nothing definitive quite yet, but let me tell you about the two things that have evolved in the last uh, couple of months. The first is the DAD study, which is the large cohort study to examine cardiovascular uh, disease associated with HIV and its treatment. And as many of you know, this is a very large study that combines about 12 cohorts. There's 33,000 patients, uh, and they've been analyzed for various risk factors for cardiovascular disease uh, in a retrospective uh, me method of doing uh, a cohort analysis. Uh, what they found uh, more recently uh, was an analysis of the risk associated with uh, the nucleosides. They looked at each of the nucleosides. The database includes 33,000 patients, about 157,000 patient years of observation, and a total of about 520 myocardial infarctions in that group. What they found was that abacavir was associated with an excessive re risk of myocardial infarction, as was DDI, and they were associated with recent use, that is, use in the last six months. Not late, uh, long previous use, but recent use. The odds ratio for abacavir was 1.9, meaning the risk of a myocardial infarction was increased 90%. Now, I'll go right on to the second observation and then address both of them. The second observation was an ACTG trial, uh, 5202, uh, which examined uh, actually in a, a four-figure factorial design of Bacavir 3TC versus Tenofovir FTC, and then the third drug was either um, Favarin's or, or uh, Atazanavir. And what they found was the group that got a Bacavir 3TC had an increased risk of virologic failure in those patients that had a baseline a viral load of greater than 100,000. Uh, it, it turned out that it was su uh, sufficiently significant, so they called a halt to the study, at least that component of it, uh, with the patients that were judged at risk. Now both of those are brand new findings uh, for a drug that's been around for quite a while. Uh, and actually has now gotten a great deal of use, especially with the B5701 uh, observation that protects the patient uh, almost 100% from the hypersensitivity reaction. Neither the increased risk of myocardial infarction nor the high rate of virologic, higher rate of virologic failure uh, with a high baseline viral load were observed in previous studies according to the manufacturers and in some of the other studies that have been presented. Nevertheless, I think what you need to know is that the DAD study, for example, is beautifully designed to look very carefully at cardiovascular events. Uh, the cohort is huge in numbers. Uh, so that the comparison is not nearly as robust in many ways. Uh, the second thing is that the ACTG trial was also very large in numbers, uh, 800 participants. And again, the numbers uh, seem to outshine many of the other studies that have not seen the same observation. So how do we use those? Well, I think right now I'm not sure we can draw any conclusions because the data are rather new and unconfirmed uh, and I think people are puzzled because we don't have a mechanism for either one. Uh, however, I think at the moment people would say, well, if a patient has a pre-existing risk for cardiovascular disease, maybe we ought to go a little bit slow with that drug. In patients that have a high baseline viral load, maybe we ought to hesitate in the use of abacavir in that population. I think beyond that, it would be premature to make any other changes in our standards of practice on the basis of what I've told you so far.
Thank you. If you have questions about this or you want to raise other issues that you think ought to be brought up, uh, please contact Medscape. Thank you.